Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello my friend uh, My name is Willian Muhammad Reski I am for, from the fourth meeting group Today we want to present a thing about the paper assignment with the title princip Principle of Communication Philosophy Okay, uh, let's get the first slide Principle of Communication Philosophy The fourth meeting group has a member First, Alip al Hajj, Second, Jeremy Putra Budi S Third, Muhammad Ferdian And fourth, Wildan Muhammad Reski Beyond the Doctrine of Science In first philosophical scam Semiotic occupy strong position. Even is explained in detail. He leaving a lot of gaps and many take many take are not resolved in this in his theory. By first and the essential phase of the efforts for making scientific philosophy is reform the vocabulary. Don't for make sure that disciplinary communicators are not hampered by simple misconception due to different uses. Next slide. Okay. Logic in the broad sense. First defines logic as symbolism. Differentiate from voc vocabularies and symbolic restoration and characterize symbol as semiotic symbol. In other words, first Classifies logic by delimit delimiting domains. Investigation on studies about the contact between symbolics, representation, and object. Therefore, this can also be called the science of truth. <coughs> the highest type of symbol is symbol which signifies growth or self-development. The idea and re representation at this art. The main problem from logic is to say whether on correct though is true. That is adaptation to give development. In other words, argument critics. Next slide. Normative semiotic on the ladder of science. Architectonic is reference which is often used by peers as philosophic communication. This idea, adapted from Ken, refers to public character and secular company. It should be more like building meant for all than that painting appreciate individuals. Condition that science must be organized in such a way so that reflecting its status as a natural class might seem to lead, a, to, lead to a very idealistic view of science. Okay, next slide. Grammar and rhetoric. Pierce proposed to divide semiotic research into three compartments. That is grammar, critical logic, and rhetoric. The function of grammar is to learn the ways of significance in general and to examine, examine, examine the ways in which something can be assigned. Second, the term condition, which appears frequently in first description of the semiotic discipline might suggest, suggest a transcendental viewpoint in which grammar lays out the essential prerequisites for semiotic knowledge. The test of rhetoric is to ascertain the laws by which in every scientific intelligent on sign gives birth to another sign and above all, uh, one though gives birth to another. Reducible relations. Pierce's characteristic is about science, namely generic semiotics. The content is simple, the premise is simple, the, that is, the sign relation is an irreducible tragic. The three of them are signs of representation that represent an object or representation or mediate between the object and the interpretant. The next is category theory to be related later to phenomenology. Problem of formalism. Representation is the connection between one thing with another object. The thing in question can be an object as well 
or another sign, as well as sentence and other objects. This relation has three elements, that is, interpreters, thoughts, objects, and signs. The existence of three these three elements that are related one another can be called the formalism of semiotics. Fish was a pioneer in formal logic. However, he eschewed excessive formalism in logical inquiry. Like we said before, he argues that formal logic must never be too purely formal, that all that it may degenerate into mathematical, mathematical recreation. A rhetorical approach to the sign. This rhetorical perspective is a bottom-up approach that departs from semantic experience rather than from mathematical or grammatical forms. There are distinct signs of experience, however they tend to be related so that no dividing lines are clearly visible in logical tools and metaphoric tools of our daily life. Like Peace says, everything is in fact put together. Case on Indonesia 10 variety of popular Indonesia batik Batik in Indonesia are like two things that cannot be spread. Batik is a typical cloud made in ancient times to be used as clothing. The word batik has come from the Japanese language ambatik, which consists the word amba which means board and white, and the word batik which means point of matik. Uh, on an 2nd of October 2009, UNESCO decided batik as a humanitarian heritage for oral and non-Hindu culture until now. Batik is still used as formal wear with a classy and elegant impression. Uh, so, this is a uh, 10 popular batik Indonesia. Uh, the first one is Batik Megamendung, and then Batik Tujurupa Pekalongan, Batik Parang Rusak, Batik Keraton, Batik Priangan Tasikmalaya, Batik Lasem, Batik Bali, Batik Piring Sedapur Magetan, Batik Malang, and also Batik Betawi. Batik and semiotic. The relation of batik with semiotic. Batik is is one of the many cultures in Indonesia that is recognized worldwide. Nation that is born and diverse in race and ethnicities. Of course, batik in each region has its own uniqueness. It's something unique. Batik has its own sign both symbols and meaning contained in the batik pattern. According to Pierce in his theory, the various signs which are bound by their object become a common language, that various signs created by humans in order to communicate are representations of linguistic language are generally accepted linguistic signs. In each color and painting, batik has a sign containing its own message or meaning. For example, this is uh, the print Sedapur Magetan Batik, which has a pattern that is dominated by the image of bamboo plants, which means to live in harmony and peace. Or Lassam, or Lassam Batik, which is heavily influenced by Chinese culture. The relationship between batik and the philosophy of communication. The meaning that we have discussed above is main purpose, one of which is to communicate. What do their signs communicate? Quoting in the book Ethics and Philosophy of Communication by Muhammad Mufid, According to Professor Onung Ujana Effendi, communication philosophy is discipline that examines understanding more deeply, fundamentally, methodologically, systematically, analytically, critically, and comprehensively by the theory and process of communication, which includes all dimensions according to fields, properties, structures, objective, 
function, techniques, and the methods. Okay, I have one example. Batik Sendang. Batik Sendang, in its initial formation, was an art product that was continuously developed until it finally became completed. Before it, Batik had a meaning as a certain point, which was described as a being brood or white. This Sendang Batik had its own philosophy and meaning. However, test batik craftsmen choose to do it without learning the message. Then it, the and only certain people can interpret it. Quote from the Semiotic Analysis Journal of Batik Sendang. It becomes clear that batik is a means of communication for batik makers. Over time, its function has also increased. Is, is it it is the delivery of historical message. It becomes clear that Batik also has a communication function which is also explored through semiotics. Okay, next is conclusion. From the result of the discussion and the relationship between the studies above, we can conclude that every semiotics or study of symbols, sight and meaning have their own purpose. Namely, basically, to communicate. The purpose of communication here is to try to uh, convey a message through non-verbal media, like this, batik. For example, the link between the case study of batik and the philosophy of communication is seen in the many batik models that have their own philosophies, which is every batik wants to convey a message or communication to connoisseur of batik art through the forms of living things or abstract strokes that aim to convey a message about the description of an event or the meaning of an event. At last but not least, suggestion. First, to get a good understanding of the meaning and the meaning of symbols, sign and other forms of nonverbal communication is a good idea to link the elements around the symbol to find out the relationship so that a good understanding is created in accordance with what we sender say. Second, if find symbols, signs, or other forms of nonverbal communication that are not in tune with the surrounding elements, sometimes we cross check the hidden message from the symbols and are not in tune. Third, to deepen our ability to interpret a symbol, sign, or other non-verbal communication. It is better if we practice interpreting symbols that we have never seen before as well as this can turn our visualization memory for the future. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Keep creative, keep communicating.